Around a hundred years ago, the field of physics was turned on its head by the discovery of the laws of quantum mechanics. Since then, with ever-improving technology, physicists have been able to explore in increasing detail the quantum world. We are uncovering more of the powerful and sometimes bizarre laws of quantum physics. At the forefront of this endeavour is the field of ultra-cold atom physics. To understand what ultra-cold atomic physics is, we need to understand what quantum mechanics is. Quantum mechanics are the, if you will, the rules that, of the game that describes how atoms behave, how single particles of light, how photons behave, so on and so forth. So what is quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is a theory which describes the world on a microscopic level. Um, and the most fundamental consequence of this is that properties like energy and momentum come in packets. And each packet is called a quantum. So this leads us to, 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 to the counterintuitive conclusion that a quantum mechanical particle can only move with certain amounts of energy, certain, certain values of energy, certain values of momentum. Whereas on a classical level, a man can walk very slowly or sprint very fast and there's a continuum of states between those two extremes. Because the laws of quantum mechanics apply to the very smallest things in our universe, we need to work very hard to isolate these atoms and to cool them down to incredibly low temperatures. In order to do this, we need to put them in a trap, and these are either made by magnetic fields or by using lasers. So when we cool these atoms to these ultra-low temperatures, we, we use funny units to talk about their temperature. We use units that are Kelvin. They're the same size as, as a degree Celsius, but they have a lower limit, zero Kelvin. Nothing can be colder than zero Kelvin. So the things we cool, we cool down the temperatures that are 100 nanokelvin, which means 100 billionths of a degree, above absolute zero, which means almost nothing, because it's colder than anything you can imagine. We need to cool these atoms down to temperatures far lower than any fridge that exists, and so we need to use completely different techniques. So the first stage is laser cooling, and then the second is evaporative cooling. And this is rather ha like how your coffee cools. So what happens is that the hotter atoms are ejected from the trap, leaving behind atoms at lower and lower temperatures. So once we have the atoms uh, cooled and contained, we will be able to literally see their quantum properties. And in fact, a number of uh, remarkable quantum phenomena will appear. A clear example of that is the phenomenon of Bose-Einstein condensation, which has been predicted by Bose and Einstein in 1924 and found experimentally in 1995. 70 years after the prediction. This has been done at GILA by Eric Cornell and Carl Wyman and at MIT by Wolfgang Ketterle and this work got the Nobel Prize in 2001. Bose-Einstein condensation. A Bose-Einstein condensate is a new form of matter which forms at very low temperatures and it's a consequence of wave particle duality. What I mean by that is that all particles in nature, atoms or, or light, they sometimes have wave-like properties and sometimes have particle-like properties. As you cool an atom down, its, its properties become more and more wave-like. And as it gets colder and colder, its wavelength gets longer and longer. And eventually, if you have a group of atoms together, eventually you reach a point where all of the wavelengths start to overlap and you form one giant matter wave and the whole group of atoms starts to behave like one wave and that's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. We're developing new world leading techniques in order to be able to control and manipulate quantum matter. These techniques are enabling us to find novel quantum phenomena within the ultra-cold atoms. Well okay so we've got quantum mechanics and we know it describes how small chunks of, of matter, small chunks of light how they behave. We needed to understand that behavior. But what's it good for? Is it only good for explaining what's already out there? Or is it something that we can leverage, can use to do completely new things? And one of the most exciting new developments, I think, in the, in the field of, say, quantum optics is the discovery that if you can actually build machines that are governed by quantum physics, then you can do things that are completely impossible 
with classical machines. The quantum physics of many, many particles is at the center of some of the most intriguing phenomena in, in uh, solid-state physics, which also have enormous technological applications if we could uh, further development and understand them better. Cold atom physics is producing entirely new technology based on quantum physics, and this is going to provide impact outside of physics and engineering.